Police make breakthrough in their probe into the robbery of a Barbados cabinet minister. That's our top story in our Barbados Today Morning News update for Thursday, March the 8th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Police have made a breakthrough in the investigations into the February 10th robbery of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Maxine McLean. A 30-year-old man was in custody last night assisting police in their probe. The cabinet minister was allegedly attacked and robbed by a man when she went to use the ATM machine at University Drive St. Michael at around 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, February the 10th. Minister of Education Ronald Jones is describing as extremely disturbing a recent viral video showing someone identified as a local secondary school teacher masturbating. As a matter of fact, Jones is calling on the Royal Barbados Police Force and the Ministry of the Civil Service to conduct a full investigation into the case, stressing that public officers, especially those who interact with children, must be held to the highest level of accountability. Meanwhile, Minister Jones has expressed disappointment at the handling of the co itch problem affecting the Blackman and Gollop Primary School at Staple Grove Christ Church. Yesterday, education officers were forced to close the school for the second time in as many weeks after teachers walked off the job complaining that the problem had not yet been resolved even though the school was subjected to an industrial cleanup last month. From April the 1st, school children may have to pay the full bus fare of $2 to travel on privately owned public service vehicles. Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, told Barbados today last night that this is the plan if government fails to honor their long-standing request for duty-free concessions on imported equipment. The law states that uh, bus fare is $2. You understand? What we do as owners is that we um, decided that we're going to charge the school children a dollar and fifty cents to 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 move them uh, to take them to school. But at this stage, with our um, maintenance costs going up, nobody, the government have not come out to indicate to us if they're going to give us duty free or not. It may have to force us now to have to may have to force us to charge the the um, the full fare to school children. Some residents of St. John have all but ruled out another runaway victory for the incumbent Democratic Labour Party in St. John when the general election date is announced for no later than June. With DLP stalwarts George Pilgrim and Leroy McLean declaring their intention to seek the nomination to replace outgoing MP Mara Thompson in this DLP stronghold, a Barbados Today team went to the rural constituency yesterday to sample the feelings of the people. And without hearing for the last couple of years, the kind of repetition that we did was having, a lot of people have changed their minds. They're either going to abstain from voting or they may turn BLP. Well, most likely I believe every BLP do the right thing they could win the seat because for all these years the DLP was running St. John. And so far they've been doing nothing. Mara Thompson was here, but she ain't doing nothing. So I know once the right seat do the right things they were getting. I'd say it's what for the best for things, but you don't know who, who we gonna want, you know? Really to wait, you know? Cause we gotta put we life in, in hands of people, so we don't just do the voting and then we do the preparation for the sovereign already or the feel like it. I know the areas and most of the areas in St. John is DLP areas. Then the babies about them. I mean, everybody say, I understand me wrong, they don't vote and they ain't doing this, they ain't doing that, but you know, come out, we be there. When you know, come out, it'll be a different thing. Mm -hmm. going to There's regional and international news after this short break.
Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. A record 53 candidates will contest the March 21st general election in Antigua and Barbuda following the filing of papers on nomination day on Monday. They came from the ruling Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, the main opposition United Progressive Party and its affiliate, the Barbuda People's Movement, and the newest political party, the Democratic National Alliance. The other candidates represent the Antigua Barbuda True Labour Party, the Go Green for Life, and the Missing Link Voice of the People Party and an independent candidate. More in this ABS News report on some of the candidates and their parties. Three candidates were nominated for St. John's City West. The ABLP candidate is Prime Minister Gaston Brown, while Wilmoth Daniel was nominated as the candidate from the UPP and the DNA's nominee was Kimel Richards. Across in St. John's City East, Melford Nicholas was nominated for the ABLP. Political leader of the UPP, Harold Lovell, was also nominated, as was Bruce Goodwin for the DNA. Meanwhile, ABLP candidate Stedroy Benjamin was nominated for St. John's City South, Michael Burton was nominated for the UPP, and Kimberly Grant for the DNA. For St. John's Rural West, Londell Benjamin was nominated for the ABLP, Richard Lewis for the UPP, and Anthony Stewart for the DNA. And on the international scene, Florida state lawmakers gave final passage yesterday to a gun safety bill that would raise the legal age for buying rifles, impose a three-day waiting period on all firearms sales, and allow the arming of some public school employees. Now, the package was spurred by the shooting rampage three weeks ago that killed 17 students and faculty me members at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland and led to an extraordinary lobbying campaign by young survivors of the massacre. But the legislation, while containing a number of provisions student activists and their parents had embraced, left out one of their chief demands, a ban on assault rifles like the one used in the February 14th massacre. Let me be clear. I do not think that more guns in our schools is the answer. Because I support the move towards common sense gun safety. I support the significant investment in mental health, although we should be doing that anyway. I support investment in school resource officers and hardening our schools, but I just can't swallow the poison pill of more guns in schools. Don't do it to feed an agenda. Don't do it for political theater. We've seen enough of that in the last couple of weeks. We've seen it across the hall. We've seen it in the rotunda. And unfortunately, we've seen it in this very chamber. This bill isn't theater, it's real life. Today we have an obligation to govern. It's time for us to be grown-ups. Grown-ups protect our kids. It's what we do. It's our turn, don't let them down. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.